going to get things started now with semi-final number one, Matt Wilkinson, who took this contest out last year. He's going up against John John Florence, who's already on his way to his best ever finish here on the Gold Coast. Well, let's take a look at the first exchange. We'll see. Oh, you're getting a preview. So John John off the rocks. That little fuller tie. Whoa. Don't hurt yourself. Well, throwaway score there. And then we'll see what Matt's got to offer. We'll stumble on the first bottom turn. A couple cars, a snap, and a kick out. So we're still even Steven. We'll give a little bit of the advantage there. You know, I would like to see, just in conditions, you know, it looks like now we finally are going to start to see that easterly flow of wind now that the rain has kind of stepped away. And uh, I would like to see John take to the air. I think that'll be the, the true point of difference. If he can do that on top of torquing cars, uh, I think that he is a, a, an advantage here. Well, he already tried it on his first wave, unsuccessful, but a couple of solid moves. He throws his board into a reverse, and he manages to ride out of this one, and then unloads with a powerful carb on the inside. Still got room to dance on the inside. He tucks into the barrel, finds some cover, and rolls it through to the inside, and uh, just swivels his way through another pirouette there on the inside. That was almost ballet-ish, huh? You know, when he landed backwards, his body still kind of torqued around, and then he had to kind of get into that ballerina twist to keep the balance over the top of the board. Right? It kind of had that vibe to it. Pretty amazing ride. Not as smooth as some of the other ones that he's had earlier in the event, where there's just been no edges caught, and he's just linked everything perfectly. But whatever mistakes he made on that ride, he made up for with some high-risk turns. Well, and he got this turn on the outside. Look at that, just completely laying into it, connected. So a little two-turn combo outside, and then sets up this section here where he goes and does the blow tail, and then somehow is able to rotate around that board without losing control. Unbelievable strength. And then mixing it up with a nice carve. I mean, this, ha this wave had a little bit of everything. Here, another little barrel, adding to the variety, and then just a little flat spin, but that pirouette throughout. Nice work from John Florence to set the stage here. Advantage, John. One more time, taking a look here, but that torqued out a little. I mean, to somehow stay over the top of his board, he was completely off balance. But he has such the skate influence. He knows how to control that board. Look at it, it goes straight up, too. When you can go straight up as well, that makes it a little bit more difficult. Look at the back foot completely off. Front foot, though, planted. And then just rides the rail through the nose, rides that rocker. And then you see the shift back, puts that back foot back to get into this. And then there's the combination of major maneuvers. You had the innovation. And then just the flow and the combo. I mean, he ticked all the boxes there. He did. High risk surfing from John Florence. He's been pacing himself through the rounds. He's going to get the reward. With a very complete ride, the numbers starting to roll through. He's looking comfortable in yellow out there. A 9.5. I mean, the whole key to that success for him is always staying balanced over the top of his board. You know, and he'll do everything he can, compressing, extending, twisting, all of it. And um, the waves are starting to deteriorate a little bit, so the scale adjusts a tad. Hang on, he's up again. I'll be back. No problem at all. As we see, John looking for a backup number now. Only trying to get rid of a two-point ride. And he's committed to this wave. He may as well ride it through to the inside. It's a good thing he did because it had a nice pocket there. He was able to get that tail release. Just so many maneuvers he can go to. Doesn't complete the rotation on that occasion, but he's back down the end of the line. Right behind him, Matt Wilkinson on a better looking ride. He's gonna try and stick with this one through to the end of past little Marley. And he finishes with a fin drift on the inside. That first wave that John caught, the place went nuts. And I'll guarantee you Wilco could hear that sitting out the back. It's gotta play into your mental psyche and everything that you got going on. John looks freed up, he looks really good. Wilco, I think he's going to have to really get progressive in this heat. You know, having the ability to go through the lip and get the aerial game and everything that John's got, he's going to be really hard to beat. Uh, did you see the first turn he did on that last ride? 
I've seen them all. Very they, progressive. Yes, definitely. And I think I think that what we've got here is just a, a classic battle of forehand and backhand. And it's going to be one of those great heats, and it's going to go all the way down to the wire, hopefully, and this thing's going to flip-flop all the way through. Well, we're watching the replays now. Thanks, Strider and uh, John Florence. This was his last ride, Pete. Came through at a 4.83 and a bit of a lost opportunity to stitch up a decent backup by not completing that last turn. Agreed, Ronnie. And, uh, but you see what he was trying to do there. Is that obviously, you would have known that 9.5. Let's back that thing up right away. Put yourself in a substantial lead. I love what Matt Wilkinson was able to do on that smaller wave, though. Put everything into it. That first turn, the big reverse attempt. But that 9.5 really kind of allowed Wilco to go there because he knew at this point, I've got to give it all. I'm not going to hold back one bit. So this is going to be a slugfest. We've talked about John Florence and the way he's paced himself through this event. Matt Wilkinson, he has basically fallen into that same rhythm of just that really tidy bottom turn and a top turn hit throughout the rounds and hasn't really had to explode his tail out of the waves too much. He got a little bit, bit more loose on that occasion. I think he's got a lot left to give. That was an explosive first turn. He finished it well. He got a 7.83, and he's back in this heat. He now needs a 6.51 to jump into first. Take a look now again once at Matt Wilkinson. You know, first maneuver, straight into it. The big backhand tail whip, slide around. But he's got a, another really good board under his feet. You can see it's glued there. Well, here he goes. The 28-year-old just stuffs that first turn a little, and he's going to get out of there. He had, uh, just Mikey was able to, to stay with him for a moment. There's that reverse attempt that he pulls off. How Somehow, that was pretty amazing to pull that down. I mean, he ends up getting a 7.83 on a wave that's a third of the size of some of the set waves. And that's that innovation progression. But look at him, he is giving everything to every turn. There's that tail release that we've seen throughout last year. But, as, you know, he's got another one of those things where he's able to kind of drift to that front foot, front foot and put that weight. Here we go. John Florence up now. Semi-final number one. He's up against Matt Wilkinson. A monster first turn. Really laying it down. And again, gets a great opportunity here. This wave standing up nicely. You can see that wind taking a little effect on this lineup, but there's still plenty of scoring potential down the line. And John's going to use it. Banking off that end section, wanting to get rid of a 4.83. Takes a smaller inside wave. So, he, again, he's trying to back it up. He knew that that 4.83 is not going to be enough, especially when Wilco's got already a 7.83. But look at this. Wave choice is great because he has steep sections and look at combos it off here. But, again, I think this is conservative surfing for John, but still going to get the goods. It's still going to get a good score and fetch. You know, it's in the good range. It could even go excellent. But, I mean, smaller way, but look at the line it had on it. And he was able to do four or five solid off the tops, connection with the lip. Could have definitely gone higher, but here we go. Matt Wilkinson now. Five minutes remaining here. Needs a 7.68. And a committed float to get started. Gets that board vertical. So good at tapping into that rhythm. <laughs> He's going to kick out there on the inside. 7.68, the required score. And two surfers that have already eclipsed their best ever result. Also in the draw. Here's the replay of Matt's last ride. So again, you can hear the crowd really trying to help Wilco there. The float, again, deteriorating right here in front of our eyes. I mean, literally, it's already picked up the wind in this heat. So the surfer's having to adjust to that. But he is so good at coming from behind you know he times his backhand snap where he loads up with that uh, Matt's gonna need more after this last ride it's gonna fall short of the requirement it's a 5.5 he still needs a 7.68 Pete did you see Elmo that's the question the footy ball two minutes and 45 seconds to go here and Matt just uh, makes John John pull the trigger on priority there John is looking to better a six with this wave. It's a little slow at the moment. Oh, it's going to go big right here. It's a bit of a reeler, though. Here's a good section. A lot of chop on the face there. Deal with Matt Wilkinson. You could hear the crowd screaming. 
as he came after John John down the line. And he's working this one over in a big way. A couple of solid hits on the lip. Can he find some more room on the inside? Gets the finish. And uh, <laughs> there he is. <laughs> giving himself the stamp of approval. Just under two minutes remaining here. Can't wait to see the start of that ride. We were focused on John Florence to surpass him. So he liked the way this wave looked in the inside and sets up the double up. And this crowd was pumping up Wilco and that's that rhythm that he gets. This is where we caught him. That was a, that was a strong final turn. It would have loved to have been able to connect this portion of it. You know, a little bit missed there, but stays with it. He's going to finish it. Make sure to never give up on that wave. take a look at John so again you say Wilco was competing here that was something where it felt like John's like oh uh, you know, had to decide did he want to take this wave and at this point he knows well I got to do something pretty big and didn't complete it so that's going to be a throwaway score it really comes down to that exchange and was it enough 50 seconds to go and we may not see another wave ridden in this semi-final stride. That cool, calm, collected understanding of what you can do. And, you know, here's John right on the end of this thing trying to, to better that six-point ride. You know, this thing's got a little line on the inside. It looks like he's going to be able to load up. We'll see if he can better. Little setup snap right there. Another little tip-tap on the inside corner. Boom, there's his fins out. Comes around, pulls it down. So, you know, he's looking for more on the inside. Will he get back to the open face? Will we see more out of John? This thing is just winding down to the seconds. Was that better than a six? I don't know. Let me tell you though, Wilco's wave was number two in that set. And all day, number two has been a better wave. So we'll see how the scores go down. Having a look at Matt Wilkinson's last wave. Well, this is where it starts. And this is the rhythm that he carries. That's Wilco getting the fins, and this is the strongest turn of it. Really laid into that section, so four solid turns. And then just a little bit of a stumble trying to get around this section, but he knows that every quarter point counts, so he gave it 110%. So they keep looking at this same wave here. So the outside had nothing going, but the little Marty section, this is where it stands up. Number two, and three, and then the fourth turn. That was solid, straight up, nice hook. I mean, one thing that maybe lacked in that wave slightly is the fact that we didn't have a whole lot of variety. Whereas uh, John Six kind of did have that. I don't know, armchair, what do you think? John's uh, Six too, the, the first term was on that outside section, but there's no doubt that Matt strung together some pretty solid moves there. 7.68 the requirement and we're waiting on the numbers to come through we'll see if he can go into the final for a second year in a row first numbers dropped and it looks pretty decent so matt wilkinson on the beach sweating on the score we'll keep a camera on him of course again we're here at the last they're on the beach and they're watching the scores come in great exchange to finish very exciting times there the number is in and we're waiting on one more score for John Florence. He now needs a 6.4. Matt Wilkinson, an 8.07. And he's about to get the news. And Matt Wilkinson's into the final once again. 